Hey, welcome back everybody. We have finally made it to the portion of the series where we will be connecting to a MySQL database. At this point in the series, you will need to be familiar with MySQL queries. I do have a full course on that on my channel for free. It's about three hours. But yeah, moving forward, we will need to know MySQL. There's two popular ways to connect to a MySQL database. The first being the MySQLi extension. This is what we'll be using. The other is PDO, meaning PHP Data Objects. Many developers prefer PDO over MySQLi because it can connect to more than just a MySQL database. I believe you can connect up to 12 additional databases, you know, Postgres being one of them. However, you would need to know object-oriented programming, which is an intermediate topic, and we have not covered that yet. As beginners, we'll stick with the MySQLi extension. It's procedural. All right, well, let's get started. We'll need to create a MySQL database within our XAMPP server. You'll need to open up the XAMPP control panel, which is this thing. Make sure that these two modules, Apache and MySQL, are both started. We will need to access phpMyAdmin, which you can do so by clicking on the Admin button next to MySQL. That should bring you to phpMyAdmin. Otherwise, you can just type in this web address, localhost slash phpMyAdmin. PHP MyAdmin allows you to configure your database. You can make SQL queries, monitor the status, export, import data. We'll be covering just some of the basics. To create a database, go to the Databases tab. We will create a database, come up with a database name. In the MySQL series, we created a database named Business DB. We'll stick with that, but you can really name it anything. Then we will hit this Create button. We can create a table, but we'll do that in a future topic. Let's be sure that that database is actually created. Let's click on our server, go to databases. Yeah, it's right here. To drop a database, you can check the database that you create, then press this drop button, but we don't want to do that. But that's how. There is some information we'll need about our MySQL server. If you go to user accounts, we will need some of this information, such as the host name, the username of root, if there's a password for the server, which there currently isn't, and that's about it. You can edit privileges too, but that's outside of the scope of this topic. All right, we have now created our database. So let's close out of phpMyAdmin. Make sure that your MySQL server is running. It currently is. I'm going to create a separate PHP file just to manage our database connection. So let's create a new file. I will name this database.php. Anything related to connecting to our database, we will handle within this PHP file. This will be a PHP script. We will declare a few variables. The first will be db underscore server. This holds the name of the server. For us, that was local host then db user that was root a password db underscore password i'll say just pass we did not have a password i will leave that empty then the name of the database db underscore name i named my database business db then we will declare a connection variable we'll shorten this to con meaning connection I will set that to be empty. Okay, these are the variables that we'll need. To establish a connection to the MySQL database, we will take our connection variable, set this equal to the MySQL I underscore connect function. There are four arguments within this function, the database server name, username, password, and the name of the database. Let's add these variables as arguments. So server, user, then password, then database name. Let me make some more room. I'll put these on a new line just for readability, but there should be no change to its functionality if I do this. If we establish a successful connection, this variable is technically what is known as an object. We haven't discussed object-oriented programming. It will represent our current connection. 
one of a few ways in which we can check to see if our connection is up and running is we can use an if statement, then place your connection within the if statement. If a connection exists, let's echo, you are connected. Else, for testing purposes, let's echo, could not connect. I will save and reload everything. Then go to your database PHP file, localhost slash website slash database dot PHP. You are connected. All right. I'm going to stop the MySQL server, then try and reconnect. We get this ugly error message. Fatal error, uncaught MySQLi SQL exception. For some reason, if we can't connect to our database, we don't want to display this error to the user. We should use some exception handling. We don't want to print any ugly error messages to the user. They will have no idea what's going on. I suggest when we attempt to create a connection, we surround this code with a try block. This has to do with the topic of exception handling. We can try some code that might cause an error, such as if we can't connect to our database. Let me just fix these. We will try and make a connection. If we encounter this exception, I'll copy it. We can take some other course of action. After our try block, let's add catch, parentheses, curly braces. Then add the name of that exception within the set of parentheses. In place of displaying this error to the user, let's echo a message such as could not connect, and I'll steal that here. I'll get rid of this else statement. So if we encounter this error again, we will display could not connect. That's a lot more obvious as to what's going on instead of that fatal error message. If I were to start the MySQL server again, then reload, we are now connected. This PHP file is now complete. Make sure to save everything. We're going to close it. I will head back to our index file. Let's generate some HTML after our PHP script. In the body, let's say, hello. Doesn't really matter what you say. Let me zoom in a little bit. Since everything related to our database connection is handled within a separate PHP file, we can include that within another file. Within a PHP script at the top of my index page, I will use the include function. We will include that file, database.php, to connect to our database. So let's see if it works. You are connected. Hello. Maybe I'll add a new line after. Could not connect. I'll add a line break. Do that here as well. Much better. Technically, it's not necessary to tell the user that they're connected to the database. We were just more or less doing this for testing purposes. One way or another, though, we should let the user know if there's any problems with the connection. So we'll keep this for now. If I were to stop the server, reload, we have that message that says could not connect. All right, everybody. So that's how to connect to a MySQL server in PHP.